All right. In this problem, we will analyze a wind, windshield wiper blade as it rotates over a wet windshield surface. Uh, and, at, and as you can see in the picture, the situation looks very complicated and you might be wondering uh, where do we even begin to analyze this complicated uh, situation. So as uh, as you will see again and again in many of the engineering applications, we to analyze anything we need to first make simplifying assumptions so that this complicated situation can be represented by a simple uh, model. Then we can so that we can use various basic physics principles that we have learned. Uh, uh, for example, the basic physics principle uh, that we want to apply in this problem is is the relation of the shear stresses to the viscosity and the velocity gradients to basically find out the torque that that is that we require to rotate this uh, windshield wiper blade so that kind of information is essential in basically designing the motor that that, that will be required to rotate this uh, wiper blade uh, and again this kind of a simplified model will give us a ballpark estimate of of the torque acting uh, that that's because we are we will be uh, using many simplifying assumptions then if you want detailed uh, results you can employ uh, other sophisticated tools like computational uh, fluid dynamics or or even you you can perform controlled experiments so yeah with that let's get started with the with the problem so you have a windshield blade of length l and it is rotating in in this arc uh, which makes an angle theta uh, on on the windshield surface which is wet so basically there is a film of water between the uh, between the windshield surface and and the wiper blade so so if i sketch this and from from a side view like this what you will see is that this is the windshield surface and you have the wiper blade at the top and in between you basically have a water film so this is my wiper blade and this is water film and this film is very very thin but but it is there and in this problem we are given that the length of this wiper blade is l its width is w and the thickness of this thin film is small t and the blade rotates uh, an arc of uh, angle theta in in time t uh, which is denoted by capital t and, and the inner edge of this uh, wiper blade uh, makes an arc uh, of radius capital r so so as it as it rotates we, we basically need to apply a torque to make it rotate from this position to this position uh, and the viscous shear stresses due to this due to the presence of this water film will will basically oppose this torque so to move it from the initial location to the final location we need to work overcome the viscous shear stresses and the torque due to those viscous uh, shear stresses and and that is the torque that we are going to estimate so to start our analy analysis just consider a small element of thickness dr at a distance let's say r from the center and and as you can see this this small element will be moving in this direction uh, and if we 
if we now look look at the element from this side what you will see is that this is the blade element of width w and this is the windshield surface and you have water here and this is moving at, at a velocity let's say omega times r so omega is basically the angular velocity of rotation of, of this uh, wiper blade and r is the position of the radial position of this small area element so in the problem we are not the angular velocity of rotation is not given directly but we are given that the wiper blade rotates this angle theta in a time capital t so its angular velocity is basically theta divided by capital t so the velocity at which the wiper blade the this small area element uh, is moving is theta r divided by t and now since this what the water film thickness is t is very small we can assume that the velocity profile inside here is linear and we can use the no slip boundary condition at the blade surface and the windshield surface to find out that linear profile so so again the velocity at which the small area element at, at a distance r is moving I'll, I'll denote it by u as a function of r is basically omega r which is this theta r by t and if i if i zoom in here i have the top surface moving with the velocity u of r the bottom surface is stationary so it is moving it is not moving and the water which is close to the blade surface moves again with the same velocity u r the water near the windshield surface does not move at all and the velocity in the upward direction it it changes linearly with the thick the thickness so i'll i'll assume the vertical direction to be y so y equal to 0 is the windshield surface y equal to t is the blade surface and i'll assume this profile to be v as a function of y so so then v as a function of y is nothing but u of r which is the velocity of the wiper blade into y divided by the thickness so if you substitute y equal to 0 you'll get v0 equal to 0 so this is basically the velocity at the windshield surface and if you substitute y equal to t you'll get v of t equal to u of r which is basically the velocity at which this small this small uh, area element on the on the wiper blade is moving so so we know that the shear stress acting on a on a fluid element is given by tau is going given by viscosity times dv by dy uh, viscosity times the gradient of the velocity so in this case it is equal to mu times u r divided by t so this is the shear stress acting on a on, on a 
on, on any water element in here so so the shear force will be a small shear force acting on on this small wiper element will be nothing but the multiplication of shear stress and the small area so the small area da the small area da if you look closely is nothing but the width time its thickness so substituting the small area here you will get r divided by t into width w times d which is the thickness so we already know what u r u of r is u of r is this simple equation here so df is mu times theta r divided by capital T upon T into W dr. Now torque is nothing but R cross F. So so the small torque acting on the small area element uh, of thickness dr as we chosen here is basically this radius r multiplied by the shear force acting acting on the small area element so this is equal to r times df and substituting df from here you will find out that it is mu theta r square by capital t small t w d r So to find out the total torque acting, we just need to integrate on both the sides. So here we are integrating with respect to R and if you look in the model diagram, R varies from capital R to capital R plus L. So the limits here for small r are capital R to R plus L. And if you integrate both the sides, you will find out that torque is 1 by 3 mu theta by capital T r cube 1 plus L by r cube minus 1 w by t. So this is the expression for the torque acting on the wiper blade for for the given conditions now we can just substitute these values given for a real life model um, to estimate quantitative value of this torque and if you substitute the given values for all all these variables on the right hand side you will find out that the torque acting on 1996 Toyota wiper blade is equal to 7 times 10 raised to power minus 5 feet LB uh, feet pound force and this is a very small number right so 10 raised to minus 5 is, is a very small number. So, so the estimate from our analysis comes out to be very small. But as you can imagine, in real life, there is a significant torque acting on this wiper blade. So the, the discrepancy is mainly because we are using so much assumptions and the actual wiper Geometry is also not parallel to the window uh, many times and the thickness of the water film is not constant and there are also uh, 
different kind of kinds of um, velocity gradients with the velocity profile might not even be linear so there, there can be pressure gradients as well and as a result the the viscous forces that we are uh, that we are estimating here this these are this might be very high compared to this this simple equation that we get from the get from by uh, get from uh, applying the newton's law of viscosity so so yeah again the simple analysis can help you but uh, you need to make sure that you you the simplifying assumptions that you use are valid and proper 